Shalom, I'm Messianic Rabbi Zef Porat, and welcome to Biblical Hebrew Foundation. Today we're going to be having a look at the Feast of Yom HaKippur, the Day of Atonement. Many have suggested that this day is a fast day. Let's find out what the Word of God says in context and how we are supposed to celebrate it as believers in Yeshua and Jesus. Now the question is, what does the Bible refer to when it says to afflict yourself? Now most Jews in Israel and around the world afflict their souls by fasting. Some believers afflict their soul by fasting. It's very important to realize that we as believers in Yeshua don't need to fast for atonement of sins. Yeshua fulfilled all the offerings once and for all. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 4 and 5. It is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Therefore Christ Yeshua came into the world. He said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. And of course, everything in the Old Testament is a shadow of the new. We find this in the book of Tehillim, Psalms, chapter 40, verse 6. Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but my ears you have opened. Burnt offerings and sin offerings you did not require. So ultimately, Yeshua fulfilled everything on the cross once and for all on the tree. John, chapter 1, verse 29. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. As believers in Yeshua and Jesus, we celebrate this feast by preparing ourselves for His second coming, so we can make it to the end, so we can make it to stage two and consummate the marriage. We don't fast for atonement of sins. He is our atonement. But it's very important to realize, and I've said this before, Jews who do not have the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, do not see Messiah Yeshua, and therefore they believe that they need to fast for atonement of sins. Now there's nothing wrong with fasting. We fast many times. If the Lord has put it in your heart to fast, then fast. But do not teach or believe that Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, requires you to fast. Because it doesn't. We're going to have a look right now. Is Yom Kippur a day of fasting according to the written Word of God, even in the Old Testament, even in the time before Yeshua came? Let's have a look at what the Word means. All these burnt offerings were done in order to open the eyes of the people, to bring them into the knowledge of Messiah Yeshua. Let's have a look in the written Word of God and see what it means to afflict your soul. It is often taught that Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, is considered a day of fasting. Is this tradition or is this a commandment? We can see in Acts chapter 27 verse 9, Much time had been lost and sailing had already become dangerous. Because by now it was after the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur in Hebrew. So Paul warned them. Now this is actually the accurate translation, Day of Atonement. What the translators did is they assumed that the Day of Atonement belongs only to the Jews, and Jews fast on the Day of Atonement. Many translations say because it was after the fast. What it should have said was after the Day of Atonement. But because Jews at that time, and even now, that don't believe in Yeshua, fast so the translators wrote the fast but they were referring to the day of atonement yom kippur in no way even in acts 27 verse 9 does this bible verse refer to uh, fasting as a commandment in the day of atonement some translations wrote fast instead of the day of atonement because jews were fasting and still fast in the day of atonement what we're doing is we're examining the scripture in the correct context However, was the fast of Yom Kippur just merely one of many traditions invented by the rabbis who did not believe in Yeshua? Let's have a look at the word fast. The word fast in Hebrew is the word tsom, which means to abstain from food, fasting. However, the word of God does not specifically call us to fast on Yom Kippur, but uses the word to ana ourselves. In Leviticus 16, verse 29, and Leviticus 23, verse 27, also in Numbers 29, verse 7, the word ana is used, which refers to a humbling or mortifying, afflicting one's soul. The Hebrew word for fast, which is tzom, is not used as it relates to Yom Kippur. The question is why? The word ana in the context of Yom Kippur has nothing to do with fasting. These were all added by the rabbis. It is also interpreted they are to refrain from bathing, anointing, wearing leather shoes, sexual relations, 
but it's not written in the Word of God. This comes from rabbinic tradition, from those who did not believe in Yeshua, those who do not have the Holy Spirit. There are no specific instructions found in context for these rules and regulations. We know what it means to fast, but what does it really mean to afflict, to ana yourselves in Hebrew? The Hebrew word ana appears about 79 times in the Tanakh, the Old Testament. We can find the first occurrence of this word being used in Genesis 15, verse 13. Then the Lord said to Abraham, Know for certain that your offspring will be sojourners in the land that is not theirs, and will be servants there, and they will be afflicted, ana, for 400 years. This is the first time the word ana is used. Here we see how being afflicted, ana, is synonymous with being a servant or being placed under the authority of another. In this light, it is not very positive because it is unwillful bondage. It is not by their own desire that they became a servant, but circumstances outside of their control and not of their own free will. The next usage of this word is similar. Genesis 16, verse 6. But Abraham said to Sarai, Behold, your servant is in your power. Do to her as you please. Then Sarai dealt harshly, Anna, with her as she fled from her. The word there for harshly in Hebrew is the word Anna. Again, we can see under the authority of another. In this illustration, the master has the right to reward or punish the servant. Let's have a look at Exodus chapter 10, verse 3. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and said to him, this is what the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, says. How long will you refuse to humble yourself before me in Hebrew? How long will you refuse to ana yourself before me? Let my people go so that they may worship me. Then we see here another use, placing one under the authority of another. It can also be used in the context of a marriage, relating to vows and binding. Numbers chapter 30, verse 13. Any vow, any binding oath to afflict, in Hebrew, to ana herself, her husband may establish or her husband may make void. Our Creator uses the word with us, meaning to humble us or to make us low. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 16. Who fed you in the wilderness with manna that your fathers did not know, that he might humble ana you and test you to do you good in the end? So we can see once again here the word humble is the word ana in Hebrew. This is a test to whether we will follow his instructions or not. His word from Genesis to Revelation. For example, Psalms 119 verse 71. It is good for me that I was afflicted in Hebrew, that I was ana, that I might learn your statutes. Psalms 119 verse 75. I know, O Lord, that your judgments are right, and that thou in faithfulness has afflicted me, has anami. So we can see here also that the word afflicted is the word ana. The word humble is also the word ana in Hebrew. And thus we begin to establish a context of what God means. Our authority is the written word of God, not man's word. You see how humbling ourselves is directly coordinated with following his instructions, his word, to ana something is a response to authority. In these incidents, ana is positive as we put ourselves willfully under the authority of our Creator, Yeshua, Jesus. And this is the reason it doesn't mention in the Bible fasting as it relates to Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. Yom Kippur is designed to encourage us, to prepare us. It's a call to humble ourselves before the Father to make ourselves low before Him in obedience. It's a time for us to submit to His authority, to prepare ourselves for His second coming, to prepare ourselves for the Feast of Tabernacle, which is the last and final feast, as we meet the Lord in the air and go home. It is a time to prepare ourselves to make it to the end. Revelation 21, verses 1 to 3. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. 
And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. All the feasts of the Lord are to bring us to that great day. Yom Kippur is just a reminder for us to follow his authority, to humble ourselves, to anna ourselves, to afflict ourselves. The purpose of Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, is to focus on Him and His ways, to humble ourselves, to only be following His Word, His instructions, His Torah, which means God's instruction, and not our own ways, or man's ways, or the rabbi's ways. It's very important to remember the words of Yeshua, Jesus, God, who said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 14, You are the light of the world. Jesus lives inside of us. The Holy Spirit lives inside of us. And therefore, our light needs to shine in this dark world. We are not supposed to be following the rabbis, but the rabbis are supposed to be following the testimony of Yeshua HaMashiach that lives inside of us. Because greater is He in us than the one in the world. As I always say, we love the rabbis, we love the Jewish people, but we cannot love people over righteousness. The true gospel must be preached. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 27. Also on the tenth day of this seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be a holy convocation, a dress rehearsal unto you. You shall afflict, you shall anna your souls and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Once again, we see that word afflict in Hebrew, anna yourself. Okay, so we should afflict ourselves, anna ourselves in Hebrew. What does that mean? To anna ourselves is to submit to his authority, to prepare ourselves for his second coming. It was the rabbis who don't believe in Yeshua that decided it is a fast day, not the Lord. Yeshua fasted. The disciples fasted. We should fast whenever God tells us to. But we cannot teach that the Day of Atonement is a fast day because that's not what the Word of God says. It uses the word in Hebrew, ana, which is to afflict, to humble, not the word tsom, which is to fast. The commandment is to have a holy convocation, a dress rehearsal, a holy Sabbath, and prepare ourselves for His second coming. So the affliction that God desires from us on Yom Kippur is a day of rest and self-reflection, not a day of necessary fasting. The reason that in Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, the Lord emphasizes so many times that it is a day of rest is because He wants us to focus on a relationship with Him. The only commandment that we find is that it should be a day of rest, a day to focus on Him, a day to anna, to humble ourselves, to cease from everything else that we're doing and focus on Him. It's about a relationship. God seeks our heart, not works. Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, is right in the middle between Yom Atuah, the Feast of Trumpets, Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles, Yom Kippur is centered right in the middle of the fall appointed times of the Lord. What is between the sound to awaken and our dwelling in boots in the eternal tabernacle is a time to self-reflect and focus on obedience, repent, and preparing ourselves. We are to rest, meditate, and focus on Him. We are to be humbled by His authority, Anna, by His authority and to ensure that we're operating under His authority 100%. Once again, the word is ana in Hebrew, translated as affliction and humbled. Let's connect Leviticus 23, verse 27, and Matthew 23, verse 12. Now on the tenth day of the seventh month is a day of atonement. It shall be for you a time of a holy convocation, a dress rehearsal, and you shall afflict, you shall ana humble yourselves and present a food offering to the Lord. Now let's read Matthew 23 verse 12. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Anna means to respond or react to someone. It is also translated as to answer. Genesis 18 verse 27. Abraham answered in Hebrew Anna and said, Behold, I have undertaken to speak to the Lord. I am but dust and ashes. So we can see that in this context, the word ana also means to answer. And Abraham answered and said, and Abraham ana 
and said. Do you see when he responded, he was recognizing the Lord's authority and he was humbling himself by realizing his position under that authority. Ancient Hebrew is also an ideographic language and in the ideographic language, the word ana means it is made of an ein, which means to see in the ideographic language, nun, life, and he, a man reaching up as to behold, ana. To answer is to respond to a certain condition. The idea to afflict your soul, to annihilate yourself, is to stop everything and give account. Paul tells us to examine ourselves in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not realize that Christ Jesus, Yeshua, is in you? Unless, of course, you fail the test. As I mentioned earlier, this word has been tied with fasting, but not tied in by our Lord and Savior Yeshua, but by the religious leaders who don't believe in Yeshua. It is very important to emphasize that fasting and affliction in the Word of God are two separate words, two separate things, two separate meanings. The importance of Yom Kippur is repentance and humbling ourselves before Yeshua, preparing ourselves for His second coming. As we are now in stage number one, of the marriage, the patrol process. We need to make it to stage number two, which is the marriage. Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. This calls for patience and endurance on the part of the people of God who keep his commandments, his word, and remain faithful to Yeshua, to Jesus. Notice it says remain faithful to Yeshua, to Jesus, not demand tradition. Also very important to bring out that the word kipul comes from the word kafa, which means to cover. So we can see that prophetically the day of atonement in the Old Testament never took away the sins, it only covered him. That's why they had to do it every time, every year, again and again. But Yeshua came and once and for all didn't cover the sins, but took away our sins. So how do we celebrate the feast of Yom Kippur, the day of atonement, as believers in Jesus, in Yeshua, in God? By preparing ourselves for his second coming by afflicting, by anah ourselves, by humbling ourselves under his authority. Let's continue to stand together as the one new man, Ephesians 2.15. Humble ourselves, anah ourselves, preach the gospel, and go home. Until next time, I'm Messianic Rabbi Zev Porat, sending you blessings from Jerusalem, Israel, in the mighty name of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Aryeh Yehuda, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, Jesus Yeshua, Amen.